Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are loads of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of hints and tips on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day. So if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And so now we're going to continue with the next questions of this theory paper, um, grade four. It's a sample paper that you can download for free from the ABRSM website. The link to that is in the description below. And this is showing you the newly revised uh, layout for the exam papers from 2018 onwards. And so let's uh, press on. So if you turn with me to page four, we're going to be having a go at question four. So here we go. <clears throat> so over the next couple of pages, all of the questions are going to be relating back to this. So just keep this to hand while we move on to the next page. So all of the questions relate back to this. And the first one is doing a bit of revision on our musical uh, directions and performance directions and um, remember all of these are uh, anything from grade one, two, three or four combined so there's a fair amount of revision to do there. I would link things thematically so you begin to get an idea of which words have the same meaning. By all means colour code it or whatever helps you to just keep a track on all of these different words because now of course we've got French as well as Italian to be dealing with. So we're asked to underline one of these words here that has the similar meaning to adagio. So first of all, we need to know what adagio means. And so we first came across this way back in grade one. And adagio means slowly, slow or at ease. And so let's just go ahead and even if you know the answer straight away, uh, let's just do a bit of revision and let's just give all of these their full def definition uh, just for revision purposes. So vif is lively. So that won't do. Lent. Now we can see um, the um, root word link easily relates to lento. And both of those mean slow. So lent and lento both mean slow. So I think that means we got our answer. However, we'll carry on. This French word here, uh, we can easily guess, is at a moderate speed. So I don't think that's quite the answer we're looking for, but we'll just carry on. And then retinue, we can see again um, a nice helpful link to the word uh, retinuto. I think we can see a similarity in the words there. And both of those mean held back like a pulling on of the reins as it were so really the one we need to be underlining we got to pretty quickly is Lent so that's that let's have a look at the next question so now we're asked to name the ornament used in bar one and so that's this sign here now you could just say mordant when it's got a line through it we have to say lower mordant here you could just say mordant or I would just say upper mordant just to be absolutely clear. If you remember it's like a rapid alteration down a step and then back to the given note. Most famous I think uh, is, oh sorry that's the upper one so it's up a note and then back down again. So um, careful there, describe that wrongly. So uh, upper mordant, let's move on. So let's give the time name of the shortest note in the melody, ignoring the ornaments because of course that would be really super quick. So the uh, shortest note, so we've got semiquavers, 16th notes, let's keep going. Semiquavers again, but here we, here we can see we've got 
demi semi quavers or 30 second notes so they are the shortest so we could either say demi semi quaver quite a mouthful or 30 second note another sort of mouthful there we go so here we go, uh, now we are asked to add the correct rest placed in the bar 1 where the star is. So here we've some time missing. So we should have 4 crotchet beats, 4 quarter notes per bar. Let's see what we've got. Well we've got one here in this crotchet beat which is dotted which gives us a half. So one and a half. These two a quarter of a beat combined give us another half. So we can see now we've got two all together. We've got a half and a half here which gives us another one, that's three. And we've got a half of a beat here, that's three and a half, so we're half a beat missing. And so we need a quaver or an eighth note rest to fill that gap. So the next question is a little bit of observation. How many pairs of tied notes appear in the melody? Now uh, just be careful because we know that this is the shape of a tie symbol but be careful because that can also be applied as a slur when it's over different pitch notes it's a slur meaning to play smoothly uh, when it's a tie it's next door note head to no next door note head of exactly the same pitch and then it adds the timing together so here this is a slur that's not what we're after that's a slur that's not what we're after that's a slur however here that's a tie so we've got one there Joining note head to note head. That's a tie. That's a tie. We've got three. That's a slur, so that's no good. That's a tie. Note head to note head. Same pitch. That's a slur. That's a tie. That's a slur. So all together we've got one, two, three, four, five. So five there, be careful you don't get thrown off scent by slurs. So keeping this paper to hand, we'll carry on at the next questions, still relating back to this piece of music. So we need to name a key in which all of the notes of bar one can be found. So we've got to find out what notes we're referring to here. So let's have a look in bar one. Well, of course, we've got a key signature of B flats. And then here we've got a C sharp as well. Now it's not possible to have a flat and a sharp in a key signature, so we must now explain this sharp in terms of an accidental, and the way you would do that is um, you would see that as the raised seventh, so if C is the seventh, C sharp is the raised seventh, D is the eighth or the octave, or our key note, so we're in D minor, and we can confirm that because D minor has a key signature of B flats because it's related to F major. So, D minor would answer that question correctly. And we've already just um, answered this question unwittingly. Which other key signature has the same key signature as the key you named above? So the related key which shares the key signature is F major. Which bar will sound the loudest? So let's have a glance. So we've got a big long crescendo here. This is forte, the whole bar stays forte. So although this bar starts off quite loud at the same volume as this, it's fading away. So overall, this is the louder bar because it stays loud throughout the whole bar. And so bar four is the answer we're looking at. So now then. We're asked to rewrite the first two notes of bar 7 so that they sound at the same pitch, but we're going to be using alto clef, so we've got to put in the new alto clef sign and the key signature now properly positioned for that clef. So we have sort of a double bar line. The middle line here is middle C that we centre our clef around. So if that's middle C, one step below is B, there's our B flat. So now let's see what notes we're copying. The first two notes of bar 7, so here and here. So actually this is a really nice easy start because that's middle C. If you remember middle C, it's like at the top of the bass clef, the bottom of the treble, as if you've met it sort of in the middle. 
and so there's middle C to start with and then we've got a C, D, E, F. So middle C to start with and then C, D, E, F. Now I know they're part of a group but we'll group these together, at least these two. So uh, middle C is a semiquaver, however this next one is a demi semiquaver so we need to just show those timings. Okie dokie, so we've got a bit of uh, general orchestral information now. We're asked to name a standard orchestral instrument that normally uses the bass clef and uh, state which family it belongs to. So depending which family you choose depends of course which instrument you give. If you say strings, um, the bass clef instruments there will be the cello or the double bass. Either one of those will do. If you choose woodwind, um, then you would say bassoon. I guess you could say bass bassoon as well, double bassoon I should say, but just bassoon would answer that. Or if you're choosing brass, you would say tuba or bass tuba. So I guess you could say double bassoon or bass tuba, any one of those will do. Now we need to choose a different family from the one that you've chosen there. So whatever you've chosen here will dictate what you choose here. And now we need to say the highest sounding member. Um, so then, let's think about if you've said strings um, here, then you'd have to choose something else. But the options would be um, the violin is the highest of the string instruments, um, the flute or the piccolo is um, a woodwind instrument, that's the highest woodwind. Um, if you choose brass, then there's trumpet, that's the highest. Now of course in both of these there is also the percussion family, however it gets a bit mind boggling there because you've got all sorts of things like the it's a whole range of the xylophone, the glockenspiel, the tubular bells and all that. So I tend to steer away from the percussion family just because it's easier to just uh, think in these groups and there's plenty in these groups to choose from. So just as long as you've got a general awareness of the orchestral instruments, it, this, there are so many options there it just gets a little bit confusing. So let's press on. Answer true or false to the following statement, are woodwinds instruments sometimes asked to play arco. Well arco means bowed and considering that woodwinds instruments are blown uh, not bowed then that's false. It's a string instrument. It's usually after you've been instructed to play pizzicato where you pluck the strings you would then um, be redirected to play with the bow again. So then, now we do have a, a percussion question here but it's quite a general one so we're not looking at which range it's in. We're asked to name a standard orchestral percussion instrument that produces notes of indefinite pitch. So this is untuned percussion. So it's not going to be things like the timpani because they are tuned, they're usually tuned to um, tonic and dominant, one and five. Uh, you could also call the kettle drum. It's not going to be the xylophone, the tubular bells or anything that we could play a bit of a tune on. It's literally basically something that creates um, a crash um, just by a, a single hit. So we're looking at cymbal. I mean the list could go on. We're looking at the triangle. You know you've got your maracas, you've got your castanets. Um, snare drum or side drum you would say, tambourine, oops, and so on. So yeah, the list goes on, but I think that's sufficient for this question. We've only got two marks, any one of those will do. So that's the end of that question. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope that um, you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you and I hope it's a benefit to your studies. If you can give me a like, that would be really great. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. 
please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.